One of the most common questions I get is, Matt, what sounds better, analog or digital? And my answer, quite facetiously, is yes. Yes, they do. (laughs) They both sound. And which one sounds better and which one doesn't sound as good is really a subjective thing. But fortunately, Ozone 8 comes with modern processors as well as recreations of some really great vintage analog hardware. And instead of asking what sounds better, analog or digital, it's better to ask what sort of character am I looking for, and based on that, what kind of processor am I going to use? For example, I have two of the same exact mixes loaded into two and three here, and actually what I'm going to do is get rid of the first tab here. So I'm going to click the close button, and it'll ask me if I want to keep that version in the project. I'm going to hit delete because I don't think I'll need that anymore. Now I have two of the exact same mixes loaded in here, but one of them has the modern processors on it. And then I loaded the exact same song, except with the vintage processors on it. Let's just take a listen to the two, because what you're going to hear is that each one of them has pleasing characteristics, and neither one of them really sounds better or worse than the other, depending on who's listening to it. So let's listen to the modern version. Now I'm going to switch to the vintage version. And now I'm going to be quiet while I bounce back and forth between the two. So to my ear, just using some general presets for all these modules, the vintage processors don't sound quite as silky on the top end, and there's generally more focus in the lower mid-range. But the modern version has a much silkier top end. And those are just a few of the characteristics that you're going to find between using either one of those. So my best advice is instead of deciding which one sounds better, I would recommend that you use both. For example, on this modern version, I have an equalizer, a dynamic processor, and a maximizer, but there's nothing to keep me from adding one of the vintage modules like vintage tape. And then I'm going to put that very first in the signal flow, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's say I wanted to add some punchiness from 15-inch tape. So let's go with clean 15. That will give me a 15 inches per second tape emulation, which really sounds thick and punchy on drums. And then let's hear the before and after. See, just that vintage plugin alone takes some of that really high frequency information and give it a little bit more character. It doesn't quite sound as silky. And then you get that little bit of a squishy sort of compression in the low frequencies. So my best advice is don't limit yourself to just using one type of processor or another. Try them all, learn the characteristics of each one, and then you'll have a better idea of which one is going to give you the characteristics that you're looking for or that you want to provide for your clients in their mastering. Now in the next section, let's talk about the standalone application.